it truly is a great day in South Carolina, but more important, it's a historic day in South Carolina. You are looking at something that is gonna once again put South Carolina first. And what this signals with this inland port is saying not only have they been open for business, but they mean business. This is serious stuff. It is starting something that will continue throughout the country. We are getting ready to see the model for the nation how to make it work, how to make connectivity actually a responsive word in creating an exporting advantage for our state and for our nation. One in five jobs in South Carolina is created at the Port of Charleston. It truly is one of the economic engines of South Carolina and ace in the hole for South Carolina business. The other big engine, and there are many, but one of the big ones is I-85 corridor. Let it be said today that the two engines of the South Carolina economy are now connected. Well, an inland port is an extension of our port facility to the interior of, of the United States, in this case, Greer, South Carolina, and it's connected by a daily uh, railroad service from the Norfolk Southern Railroad. Parties at play here were certainly Spartanburg County. Uh, the city of Greer just did a phenomenal job um, in, they actually took the lead role. This, this whole inland port will actually be located within the city limits. Um, and they took the lead role with permitting and, and turned permits around in, in just extremely fast order. This gives us all another tool to go out and sell the upstate as a region that's, that's a prime location for businesses to locate and expand. We bought the property in 1983 when Virginia was establishing an inland port at Front Royal and there really are not that many and I would argue that there's not really one that's going to be as modern as the one that we're building because we're able to ground loaded containers and really take advantage of those types of efficiencies. It was interesting when we first announced an inland port, people thought I had lost my mind because they asked what river that we were going to deepen to get up to Greer. And actually we did figure out that you could go up the Cooper River to Lake Marion to the Broad River to the Ennery River and almost get to the inland port. But it's not about deepening a river, it's actually about leveraging a rail service that makes it unique. An inland port is a, is a port, like the Port of Charleston, except it's inland. It has the ability to offload containers and product from ships coming from all over the world and distributing them throughout the United States and North America. So it acts like a port, doesn't look like a port. We're not gonna have ships, we don't have ship channels, we don't have giant cranes unloading containers from huge container ships. What we do is we process right off the ships that are coming from all over the world, process the product off those ships, bring it up to Greer, lay out those, those containers, lay out that product for transshipment, for somebody to come and pick it up by truck, for it to continue on a rail line somewhere else, for it to be distributed. The containers are broken down and parts get distributed to various locations. It also serves the same function as a traditional port in the People who are bringing goods to the port only have to bring them to the inland port. They can then be loaded on trains, immediately brought down to the port of Charleston, and then shipped to the world from there. The partnerships needed to make it work are anchor tenants, if you will, who, who are the key drivers. And in this case, we start with BMW. They're growing, 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 growing. And Everything they say is about 75% of their product is exported. We don't have a thousand drivers that get in BMWs every day and drive them down there. And if you notice, they're not all transported on the transport trucks going down 26. It's got to be an efficient way to do that. In terms of economic development, the Inland Port immediately provides a great opportunity for existing businesses that ship product, that export product via the Port of Charleston. Uh, it makes an opportunity for them to ship their product more effectively, efficiently, cost effectively. So what this does is it allows us in economic development to recruit both manufacturers and importers. Um, a large number of our manufacturers such as BMW, Michelin, they export a very high volume and high value products through the port. They also import materials as well, maybe raw materials that go into the production of their finished goods. The name of the game with, with logistics and, and with an inland port is trying to have an opportunity where you can cargo match. If you are in Los Angeles and all you are is an import market, 
That means all these containers are coming in from China and all you have are empty boxes sitting there, then those importers don't realize the benefits of that because they have to ship back empty containers or they have to move those empty containers to where they can be filled for export. Our advantage here in the upstate is that we have a 50-50% relationship. If you're an importer, you receive value from the fact that BMW may be exporting and filling that container. So it drives down the cost, whether you're an importer or an exporter. And that's really what gives us a strategic advantage from an economic development perspective is it allows us to sell this as a benefit to both manufacturers and, and uh, importers. We are already getting inquiries from companies within 200, 300 miles of the inland port saying, hey, we need to take a look at that. We use the port of Charleston. And it'd be a lot more efficient for us to be somewhere near that inland port so we can quickly ship our goods and receive our goods. It better be running by September 2013. That's pretty quick. You know, every task you, you undertake expands into the time you allow for it. So we need to move quickly. Uh, that's really concurrent with when BMW is changing over their models. So we need to get it done fast. The important parts of what uh, the general public should understand about the value of the inland port and the partnerships that are being developed long term um, uh, for them and the benefits for them are really bringing high quality uh, high paying jobs to our community long term. Uh, we want to be a growing state. Uh, we want to be able to provide uh, those quality jobs in our community that are going to now allow people to have a high quality of life here uh, in the upstate and around the state for that matter because not only will the inland port serve just the upstate, it will serve a greater portion of the entire state of South Carolina which we think is extremely important uh, for the future. It really positions our, us well uh, both with the low country um, as well as the upstate uh, to really capitalize on the distribution business that uh, when we talk about a global commerce environment uh, that is extremely important for us to be successful in the future.